Okay, today we're going to discuss uh, two organ systems. Uh, what are these organ systems, class? Endocrine and respiratory system. Okay. So, um, can we please settle down? Please settle down. <laughs> Now, as a review, one, when do we say if it's an endocrine organ? When it does not have what? No duct. No duct, right? So, that's very important to differentiate. Endocrine glands do not have ducts, and therefore, what happens with the hormones that they produce and secrete? Where do they go? <laughs> so, directly where? Okay. Why? Why? Why the bloodstream? Because it's a targeted organ. Okay. To reach its target organs, of course. How can you reach your target organs if you do not follow a way upon which you can reach them, right? So no ducts, hormones <coughs> are secreted where? In the blood circulation. <laughs> Okay, so in other words, you would expect the hormones to be found in this blood circulation. So in other words, it has to reach its target organs. Unlike exocrine glands, do they have any ducts? Yes. yes, they do, right? So essentially what we're saying, therefore, is that you have to be able to differentiate exocrine versus endocrine glands. Now, with regards to the endocrine glands, what is the master of the master gland? Okay, very good. So we will prove that the number one here. Hypothalamus. Is that part of the brain? Yes. yes. Is it also an endocrine gland? Yes. Because it secretes what? Hormones, right? Okay. So hypothalamus. Let's try to tabulate. Hypothalamus is in the brain. It produces hormones, right? Yes. So let's bring it up here. So the hypothalamus is one of them, that's the gland. And then on top, on the right here would be what hormone they produce. And then we can put their function. So what are the two hormones produced by the hypothalamus? ADH and okay. ADH and what's the other one? Oxytocin. Very good. Now, can anybody tell me what is the main function of your ADH? Like what is the meaning of the word antidiuretic hormone? Okay, which, what will be the target organ for this hormone? Kidneys. So kidney, tell the kidney to what? To water retention by the kidney. Right? So, why is that necessary? It's necessary whenever there is a need to what? conserve water. Let's say you have diarrhea. Have you ever heard? How many of you have developed diarrhea? I suppose all of us, right? Very good. If you do not raise your hand, you're not probably you're not human, okay? If you have diarrhea, do you, do you lose water in your stool? Yes. Yes, you do. What hormone will be released? ADH. ADH, because it will be released from here. Now, where is it stored, these two hormones? In the posterior. Okay, so we have here the... With the tire gland, they start first with the posterior lobe. Posterior. And it stores what? ADH. The two hormones above, right? Mm -hmm. ADH and oxytocin, but it's actually produced in the hypothalamus. So ADH for water retention, it is going to be produced in the hypothalamus, stored in the posterior lobe of the pituitary gland, and then eventually it will be what? Released into the blood circulation. What's the target organ? The kidney. The kidney, so that the kidney will what? Retain. Retain water. Okay. Now, what about oxytocin? What is the function of oxytocin? Okay. Uterine what? Uterine contraction. Labor. Uterine contraction during what? Labor. Labor. Correct. What is the purpose of that? Why do you want the muscles in the uterine wall? It's called myometrium. 
Why do you want the muscles to contract during labor? So you can push the baby out. To push the baby out or to expel the baby out. It's about time, it's nine months. Your lease is up. Your lease is only good for nine months, free board and lodging, with the umbilical cord and free food, with an amniotic fluid. Now it's the time to get out. Okay, what else? Aside from uterine contraction, what is the purpose of your oxytocin? Yes? Milk production, is that the right answer? No. Milk ejection. Very good, Ms. Morales. What's the word? Is there a difference between production and injection? Yeah. Yes, there is a big difference, right? In medicine and nursing, do we want to be perfect yes. in everything we do? We can't afford to make mistakes. <coughs> Ejection is different from production. So oxytocin is for what? Milk ejection. Milk How? How is it going to be possible for milk ejection? Okay, first of all, how is milk released from the mother's breast? What does the baby do with the nipple? Suck the nipple. It's called the sucking reflex. When the baby sucks the nipple of the mother, guess what? It sends an electrical signal or impulse to the posterior lobe in order to release what hormone? Oxytocin. And what happens to the hormone? It goes to the blood circulation, reaches the myoepithelial cells surrounding the nipple, and this myoepithelial cells will what? Contract in order to release what? So release or injection of the milk is possible because of oxytocin. Okay? So, are you also aware, what is the other role of uterine contraction aside from inject, uh, expulsion of the baby? Bonding. Hmm? Bonding. Well, everything is bonding when you do the milk thing, you know? Don't you like it when your mom feeds you? Mommy, I'm hungry! And then the mommy will produce the milk. Maternal bonding, yeah, that's right. What can the uterine contraction do? Well, it's not fair to you. I will tell you why. In the field of medicine, we want the muscles to contract, okay? At the same time, remember, when the baby is born, the baby comes out, I think I already showed this before. Baby comes out first, right? The vagina here, then there. Baby comes out, and the baby says, thank God, I'm first. What will follow me? Oh, the placenta, sir. The baby knows the answer, right? Why the placenta? Because the baby comes out first, the umbilical cord is attached to the placenta, and this will come out in the nursing board exam. How do you know the placenta is separating from the endometrial wall of the uterus? There is a lengthening of the umbilical cord because now the placenta is separating from the wall, and there will be a sudden gush of warm what? Blood. Why would there be a sudden gush of warm blood? Because the placenta is separating, thereby exposing what? The uterine arteries. Is that bad or good? Bad. What happens when the placenta separates and the uterine arteries are open? Mother could bleed out. So what do you think will oxytocin do to the uterine muscles? Contract. So if this were the uterine arteries, and they're open, blood is flowing. What do the uterine muscles do? Contract. Contract. In order to stop what? The bleeding. So that mother will not die. We are here to save lives. Everything you do here has an anatomical basis. To be smart in nursing is to be smart in anatomy. It's therefore important that the levels of oxytocin are high. Yes. Right? So the uterine contraction to expel the baby and uterine contraction to prevent vaginal bleeding because the uterine muscles, when they contract, they will compress what? The uterine arteries, which are the blood vessels, so that the mother will not bleed to death. Now, what happens, therefore, if the mother has low levels of oxytocin? What happens to the uterine contraction during labor? <coughs> you see me? Yeah. That's what we're <laughs> if I go like that, make sure it's still on. Huh? <laughs> no contraction. Okay, no levels. No. Weak contraction. Okay? And if there's literally, literally none, there will be no uterine contractions. Okay? 
Is that good for the baby? No. No. A mother starts labor at 6 in the morning of a Monday. It's 24 hours later, the muscles contraction is still weak. <laughs> Oftentimes, you expect the uterine contraction to become what? Stronger. Get stronger every hour. And not only getting stronger in intensity, but it will become more what? Frequent. frequent. Very good. I like the word frequent. So instead of every 10 minutes, every 5 minutes, after 1 to 2 hours, every 3 minutes, and every 2 minutes, and then the intensity becomes stronger, and that's why the mother has to cry because of intense what? Hey. Of course. So what happens if there's not enough oxytocin? So instead of every five minutes or every ten minutes, it will only be every ten minutes until one hour, two hour, three hour, ten hours later. Yes, my dear, what do we do? What do we do to this mother? Before we do the C-section. What? Okay, what is pitocin, my dear? You are absolutely right. Are you an LVN? Yeah. Exactly. That's why you should know. Because this will come up in the nursing board exam. What exactly is pitocin? Yes? Exactly. It's a synthetic form of oxytocin. Manufactured by who? Smart men. What did man do? Man said, hey, you know what? Why don't I study this chemical compound called natural oxytocin under the microscope and all this whatever studies they do, spectrometer, OMG, I can do this in the lab. Came up with pitocin, a drug manufactured by I don't know which company. Pitocin, therefore, P-I-T-O-C-I-N, will be injected to the mother intravenously so that it will take place, it will take over the low levels of natural oxytocin of the mother. Good or bad? Good. But should we monitor the patient's uterine contraction? Yeah. Yeah. Very often, right? Okay. <laughs> now, can we also, so that's called what? What is the term used when you do this? You induce the labor, is the verb, what is the noun? Induction of what? Of labor. Do you understand? The verb is to induce labor, the noun is induction of labor. So you might be, what, do I need to know, do I need to know this, this, Dr. Gamma? Yes, why, why, because you'll be working as future nurses. Normally, you have enough levels of oxytocin. When you do not have enough, Guess what? We have to induce the labor. Now, if this does not work, then we have no choice but to perform what? C-section. C-section. Can we also give oxytocin in the form of pitocin when there is uterine? Do you know what the word A means? What does A mean? Huh? Absent or without? Absent or without tone, muscle tone. Can that happen when the placenta is delivered? And guess what? What would you be expecting as a nurse? Severe what? Bleeding. Bleeding. The first thing I would do, I will tell the nurse, we need to what? Give pitocin. Now, if does not respond to pitocin, then there's something wrong. What are the chances of the placenta being retained in the uterine wall? Very high. That's the reason why when I was in medical school, one of the things we do together with the nurses is to look at what? The placenta. How many of you have seen a placenta? It looks like what? A burger patty. <laughs> Full of blood. I'm not kidding. One patty here, one patty there, one patty here, one patty there, one patty here. And guess what? If one patty is missing, it's like an excavated land, land mine. Then if it's not there, it is where? In the endometrial wall. And guess what? If you have this as part of the placenta, it is in the endometrial wall. When the muscles contract, what happens? The placenta is retained. Will it affect the compression of the uterine blood vessels and arteries? Yes. It cannot be compressed. Why? Because there is something that is mechanically what? Preventing the uterine muscles compressing what? The blood vessels, the uterine arteries. Can that mother bleed to death too? Yes. So if you are sure that there is a placenta, what do we do? Do you know what we do? Have you heard of the word D and C? Yes. Dilatation and curettage. Scrape off what? The placenta. Don't worry, you will learn this in core nursing. Because you will, who will be sitting the doctor when I perform a D and C? The nurse. Do I do D and C for abortion? Yes. Yes, we do. 
to prevent the mother from dying of bleeding. The part of the baby is still there in a spontaneous abortion. Okay. The bottom line, therefore, is that that's how important oxytocin is. Now, what about ADH? As we said, water retention by the kidney in the presence of fluid volume deficit, when you lose a lot of water, when you're dehydrated, is this important? Yes. It comes from the word anti, which means against what is diuresis? Urination, voiding, making wee wee. So when you void, are you releasing water? Yes, you do. What is anti there for? Retaining the water to save your life. Okay. Target organ is the kidney. Target organ for the oxytocin are two organs, the uterine wall and then what? The breast. Okay, now in the brain, we have the posterior lobe. What's the name for posterior lobe class? Perfect. Somebody's be prepared for this quiz today, huh? Who said neuro hypothesis? Mr. M, were you, the, were you the one who said neuro hypothesis? Yeah. So let me ask you the other question. What is the other name for anterior lobe of the pituitary gland? Adeno hypothesis. Very good. What is the name for another name for pituitary gland? That's the time you say hypothesis, right? So if it's anterior lobe, it is what? Adeno hypothesis. Hypothesis is another word for what? Pit Pituitary gland. That's why if I perform a hypophysectomy, I am surgically removing what? The pituitary gland. Okay? Now, can you give me any hormones that are found in the, produced by the anterior lobe? FSH. Okay. FSH, yes. What does it do? Estrogen. Estrogen. The follicle stimulating hormone. Do you have your prolactin? What else? Okay, you have what? FSH, prolactin, you have TSH, what else? LH. LH. What else? ACTH, what else? GH. Huh? What the H? GH. Oh, GH, yes, okay. I said, I said, GH. Okay, follicle stimulating hormone. What does it do? Follicle stimulating hormone, yes. Huh? Yes, what is the follicle, what is the target organ for the follicle stimulating hormone? Ovaries. Ovaries, what do you find in the ovaries? The ovarian follicles. Stimulates the ovarian follicles. What about prolactin? Stimulates milk production. What? Stimulates milk Okay, what's the key word there? <laughs> milk production. Milk production. So it's the opposite, it's not the same as ejection. Prolactin is milk production. <clears throat> What about TSH? What is the target organ for the thyroid stimulating hormone? T3. Okay, okay. Okay, so you don't understand my question. What is the target organ you give me? TS, T3, I said. Uh, before you answer, you have to listen to the question first. And that is how you become smarter in that exam. You have to read the questions carefully because you might be answering the wrong answer for the wrong question. What is the target organ of the TSH? Thyroid. And what are the two hormones produced by the thyroid gland? T3 and T4. Perfect. And what does T3 mean? Triiodine thyroid. Triiodothyronine. Tri 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 T R I I O D O T H Y R O N I N E. What about T4? Thyroxine. T H Y R O X I N E. Is spelling important? Yes. Very important in nursing. Believe me. Okay? So, what are these two hormones for? In one word. Metabolism. Very good. I will add the second word, cell. Metabolism. Is that important for every single cell in your body? Yes. Exactly. And that's the reason why when the thyroid hormone levels are low, especially in children, will they become, will they suffer from dwarfism? Because it will affect the bone cells. Will they become mentally retarded when the heart T3, T4 levels in these children are low? Yes. Yes. yes, because it affects their brain's health. What condition is that called? Cretin. Or cretinism. Okay. So what do you think we do with these children with cretinism? What do we give them? What do we give these children who are low level, who has low level, hypothyroid? Hypo means low levels. Of course, but it's centroid. Uh, it's not shit, but uh, <laughs> it's 
to him and said, shit, no. What is sin, Freud? Now remember, what is lacking, I said? Yes? It's a synthetic form of what? Thyroxine. Okay, do you, do you understand? So nothing is rocket science here. The patient lacks thyroxine. What do we give the, the baby? But the synthetic form. What do you mean by synthetic form? Man-made form. Is it called synthroid? Yes. Will this come out in the nursing board exam? Yes. Yo. Okay. Are we going to give synthroid for children with high levels of thyroid hormones? No. You're going to kill the patient. And that is how you fail the nursing board exam. I'm not kidding you. So whenever I said you just killed the patient in the nursing board exam, theoretically you did because you came up with the wrong answer. Obviously, you do not give thyroid hormone replacement if the thyroid hormone levels are high. You only give it when the high thyroid hormone levels are? No. There you go. That, that's so, that's so what? Easy. <clears throat> now you would say, oh, Dr. Gamo, you've been doing this for many years. But it will be easy for you too. Why? If you know your hormones, my goodness, everything will be easy. Okay? So, what about adults? Can they suffer from hypothyroidism too? Yes. What happened to their heart rate? Slow. Will they gain weight? They, do they become obese? Will they have, uh, well, adult, they become forgetful? We don't use the word retarded for elderly people or adult, like 20 years old. But we say forgetful. Okay? We try to be politically correct. So a forgetful person who has gained weight, who has slow metabolism, and the heart rate is low, could that person be suffering from hypothyroidism? Yes. Could that affect the ability to learn? Yes. yes. So again, what do we give this adults who are suffering from hypothyroidism? Synthroid. Synthroid. Definitely. Okay? <clears throat> do you understand? Now, if it's the opposite, like grave disease, we do not, I repeat, because they have so much what? Thyroid hormones. We even give them anti-thyroid medications. You will learn this in core nursing and pharmacology. Now, so remember, TSH is produced in the anterior lobe of the pituitary gland, goes to the blood, goes to the, where do you find the thyroid gland? In the neck. Now, what is the element or mineral needed to produce thyroid hormones? Iodine. Perfect. And what is the natural source of iodine? Seafood. Seafood, very good. Is salt a natural source? No. No, it is man-made. What did man do? He put the iodine where? In the salt. In the salt. Why? Because if you live in the mountains like Big Bear 200 years ago, you develop enlargement of the thyroid gland. What do you call that enlargement of the thyroid gland? Goiter. Goiter. Very good. G-O-I-T-E-R. So in order, because you live in the mountains 100 years ago, what did the World Health Organization do? Hey, you know what? Even though you live not, you're living away from the sea, how do I make you sure that you have iodine in your food? Put them in the salt. So that means it's no longer natural. It is what? Man-made synthetic. If it's iodized salt. Okay? But natural, seafood is the answer if this were a nursing board exam. Okay? Now, what is the important role of luteinizing hormone? Ovulation. What? Ovulation. Who said ovulation? Well, the answer is correct. And who said ovulation again? Raise your hand. What is ovulation, my dear? The what? <laughs> See, no, it, 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 now I'm not trying to humiliate you. I'm just saying your answer could be right, but you need to explain what exactly it is. That is how you become smart learners. Smart learners are people who go into the details. They're obsessive compulsive. They would anticipate. I know the answer, but why, why is it ovulation? What exactly do you mean ovulation? Yes? When you go into heat, okay. Yes? Uh, when a follicle is released from one side of... When the follicle is what? Is released. Is it the follicle release or is it the egg? It's the egg. Can you imagine your ovarian follicle release? <laughs> You'll bleed to death. The egg from the The ovarian follicles are part of the ovaries? The egg is what? Release. When is the egg released? Every woman in this room should know. Every month. I know every month, but exactly when? Very good. 14 days after the first day of menstrual period, and it's the best time to have sex and get pregnant? <laughs> right? Right, remember? How many days? 14. After what? 
first day of menstrual bleeding because that is accurate. You don't count from the last day of menstrual bleeding, right? Because some women have five days, some women have four days, some women have six days. Me, I have no idea. <laughs> okay, let's say May 1, first bleeding, first day, and then up to May 5. So what would be 14 days? May 15. So if you have sex on that day, if you're lucky, if you're, you are a good catcher of the... S <laughs> so remember, this is what? Uterus, this is what? The fallopian tube, this is the fibrae, this is the ovaries here. When the egg is released, the fibrae... <laughs> And the egg travels to what? The fallopian tube here. And during sex, when the man reaches his point of no return, this is called climax, the sperm will travel at 100 million miles per second. I'm just kidding. And the sperm goes to the fallopian tube, fertilizes the egg, dang, you get pregnant. Why? You had sex in the proper timing. How do you know that the woman has released the egg? How do we know in the field of nursing and medicine? What? Yes? Discharge? Uh, well, okay, the answer is, I will provide the answer. <laughs> there will be a rise in the basal body temperature by one degree Celsius. You understand? So if you really want to get pregnant, you've been married for five years, what do you bring with you every day? A thermometer, exactly. So you are in my classroom right now, it's already 6.30, and your basal body temperature went up on the 14th day. And you will raise your hands, Dr. Gamma, can I be excused? I said, why? <laughs> My husband is waiting outside. We have reserved a room outside. <laughs> I don't know which is the nearest hotel. Once you're done, you can come back to my class. I will excuse you. <laughs> We've been waiting for the right time, Dr. Gamma. Now the time has come. Tonight is the night. So I will give you at one hour, 6.30 to 7.30, come back, take the piss. <laughs> why not, right? Okay. Because that is your first baby. I could be your godfather for that baby. <laughs> so ovulation. <laughs> ovulation. So how important therefore is this? Very important. In some people, like the, they don't want you to be using what? Contraceptive pills, right? It's called the natural rhythm method. I believe in the Catholic Church. They want you to follow what? The rhythm method. Following what? That 14 days. So, if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong, you might get pregnant and you blame me. <laughs> 14 days, right? So if I'm not mistaken, plus or minus three to four days before ovulation and plus or minus three days after ovulation. So if it's May 15, maybe May 12, and then 15 plus three, May 18. So if you have sex between May 12 and 18, it's called the unsafe period. So be watch out. But better watch out. You better not pop if you get pregnant, okay? Okay, now, ACTH, adrenocorticotrophic hormone. What is the target organ? Adrenal. adrenal gland, adrenal cortex, right? Okay. And we know that the adrenal cortex, and we write adrenal cortex here, has two hormones. What are these? Glucocorticoid, which happens to be cortisol, and what's the other one? Mineraloa, which happens to be aldosterone, okay? Believe me, you need to memorize all these things. You need to. I already gave you a study guide. So by that, you've memorized this, I suppose, right? You know the spelling, you've memorized it. I gave a study guide as early as Wednesday, I believe, right? So there is now no excuse, oh, Dr. Gum, you gave us a study guide on Saturday. So by now, you have to know that the mineral corticosteroid is the aldosterone. Which one is the glucocorticosteroid? Cortisol is there, okay? What do you think glucocorticosteroid do to the glucose levels in the blood? Increase what? Blood sugar. Why? Do you know why? See, you always ask these things, my dear students. You, do not, do, you just do not acquire knowledge without knowing why, how, where, when. And that is the best. Yes. After using energy, it conserves it. Uh, it increases. Okay. Now, when do we need our adrenal glands for? For what situations? Sympathetic. Say belly fiber, flight or fright, stress situations. Do you need sugar there? Yes. To survive, right? Yes. You want sugar to your brain so you can think. Instead of using the elevator, I will use what? The stairs. The stairs. So do you need any high levels of glucose? Yes, you do. That's why whenever you are in a 
stressful situation like taking the NCLEX or board exam, do you want to make sure you have food eaten before the exam? Because if your blood sugar is low, you will fail at the exam because you will faint. So don't you forget to take food before taking the nursing board exam. The same thing here. In a stressful situation, the body will attempt to make sure that you have high levels of blood glucose via what hormone? Cortical, which is a corticosteroid preparation. On the other hand, what does aldosterone do? Sodium. Sodium what? Retention. Retention. And what else? Water, Water what? Retention. Retention. And what would be the target organ for this particular hormone? Huh? The kidneys again. Now remember, the adrenal gland is found on top of the kidney. That's the reason why it's also known as what? Suprarenal gland. What does supra mean? Above renal means kidney. Does it make sense? Okay. So, what else? Sodium retention, water retention, and potassium what? Excretion. Excrete means eliminate, right? So the reason why you need to know this is because when you go to what? Pathophysiology, you need to know what can happen. You understand? I'll give you an example. Have you heard of Cushing's disease? What is Cushing's? High levels of the hormones here. So what happens if you have Cushing's, you have high levels of what? Sodium in the blood. You will be retaining water, your blood pressure goes up. What happens with Cushing's? You will be excreting potassium in the urine, if you are excreting potassium in the urine, what happens with your blood potassium levels? It gets go go down, it's low. Again, will this come out in the nursing board exam? 100% sure. Because treatment will differ. Who do you think will give, will you give potassium in the form of bananas? Cushing's or the opposite, which is Addison's disease? Where do you give the banana which contains potassium? Cushing's, why? Because they have low, exactly, low potassium level. What is the opposite of Cushing's? Addison's. So the effect, but if you know the effect of the hormone, you can answer every question in the board exam, believe me. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Questions on Cushing's and Addison will come out. Now, what about um, the adrenal medulla? Okay. Epi or adrenaline, and what's the other one? Nor epi or nor adrenaline. And you know that is the neurotransmitter for what? Sympathetic response. What does it mean? Increased heart rate, bronchodilation. That's the reason why when a patient is suffering from an asthmatic episode, do we give epi? Now what is epi? The shortcut for what? Do you think I'll be in the ER and say, can you give the patient epinephrine? <laughs> what do I tell the nurse? Okay. Epi. Because time is of the essence. Every second counts. In fact, we give what we call intramuscular what? What do you call that thing, intramuscular? Yeah, yeah what is the name? Epi. Epipen. Epipen. Well, there you go. How many of you have tried injecting yourself with Epipen intramuscularly? You gave it to a patient? Yeah. Okay, because what was happening to this? Bee allergic sting. reaction or uh, asthma? Allergic reaction to bee sting. Oh, bee sting. See, did it save his life? Yeah. There you go. That's how you save life. You give intramuscular epic back. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, it has become very expensive. It used to be only 100 or something, right? Like 80, they were 80 for a while. Now and then now it's, 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 I, I heard it was even 1,000 one time. Yeah, you know? they came back there. They went up because who controlled the company? The businessman, okay. Now, epi, we give that to patient, right? Very good. Now, so let's go back here. So growth hormone, obviously it is in the anterior lobe. Obviously it promotes growth of what? The bone, the muscle, to make you taller. If you lack the growth hormone, will you become a dwarf? Yes. Yeah. Yes. But if you have too much of the hormone, can you become a giant? Yes. yes. Eight feet, six inches high. Can you play basketball with eight feet, six inches high? Yes. No. Have you ever seen these people? Uh, go to YouTube. Tallest man. They have acromegaly. And they can't even walk away. They need what? The cane. Now, uh, who's the tallest NBA player? Yao Ming is 7 feet 6. Yaquil O'Neal is 7 feet 2. 
Dr. Gamo is five feet nine and three fourths of an inch. But I used to play center too in my high school class. I was the tallest. My classmates were five five, so I was tallest. <laughs> so I would just go like this. If I play against Yao Ming, seven feet six, oh my God! He would just look at me. <laughs> okay, but in Yao Ming and Shaquille O'Neal's case, it is what genetic. Both parents are tall, I suppose, and therefore that's why they're tall. But gigantism, gigantism is abnormal. The over-secretion of the growth hormones in the anterior lobe of the pituitary gland is not good for the body. It can kill you at a young age. If you look at YouTube and look at these giants that you see, seven, eight feet six, eight, nine, tallest man in the world, they can even dribble the ball. Why? They're so clumsy because why? It's abnormally high and eventually we have to remove the pituitary gland using what? A transnasal approach. Now, can anybody remember, what is the pituitary gland found? What bone? Sala to sika what bone? Sphenoid bone, exactly. So you do a transnasal approach, because if you do it here, you destroy the brain. So you do it here, remove the pituitary gland, you save the life of that person. But you may have to replace hormones that are not anymore present. Okay. Now what else? So let's go to, what about the pineal gland? Melatonin, and what is this for? Circadian rhythm, right? And you know what is circadian rhythm? Waking and sleeping cycle. You wake, sleep, wake, 